Project for today is going to be this 99 Polaris Sportsman 500. This was way back when I first started the channel. I had a couple videos on this one. It's not starting very good anymore unless we put a jumper pack on it. And it had a aftermarket starter in it, I know, when I first got it running. So we're going to put a good used one in there and see... Hopefully that's our issue. These can also have a, a decompression valve issue on the cam. It has a, a little ball in there that pushes on the rocker arm and that can wear a groove in and doesn't doesn't work anymore after a while and that'll make them turn over hard. Because once it's warmed up, it seems like it does start okay, but it's still a little bit hard to get it going. So we'll try the starter first and see if that works. The first thing we gotta do is pull this seat off in the side panel. And we'll have to pull we'll have to pull this tube off here. Give us a little bit of extra room. Which that one looks like I must have forgot to put the clamp on there. And there's just a 3 8 bolt there. And we can see our starter down in there. So there's a just a 10 millimeter nut holding this power wire on. It's a good idea to disconnect your battery whenever you're doing stuff like this also. And there's a bolt down in here and then there's a bolt up here. And sometimes there's a ground wire. On this bolt up here, but this one doesn't have that. This kind of looks like they put the wrong bolts. Yeah, that's definitely not the correct bolt. That's one thing that is really frustrating when you're doing stuff like this. It's kind of a simple project, but then when somebody does something like that, it makes it a lot more difficult because now you can tell the threads weren't very good when I was pulling this out. So I'm hoping we don't have to tear the whole clutch cover off to get in there to tap out both of those bolts, bolt holes. Most of the time, if you have your old bolts, you can bring them to a hardware store and they'll be able to match them up with something. If they don't have it, they'll at least usually be able to tell you what thread pitch it is and size and stuff so you can order one online. We got that one. That one doesn't actually come out all the way until you get the starter. Hold out. And just give it a tug. Sometimes you gotta get a pry bar behind it. Pull it out of there. And there's the starter. You can tell it's just a China made one. It's got nothing on the back here. And there's no markings anywhere on it. That's usually a sign. And you can kind of tell by the shininess of it the what they use for their their aluminum and stuff is kind of just a lower grade aluminum. Once you've seen a bunch of them, you can kind of tell right away by looking at them. So this is our replacement. Just a used one I had, but this one, uh, it says right on it, made in Taiwan. So it's still an aftermarket one, I think, but it's probably a little bit better just being made in Taiwan instead of a China-made one. So I'm going to lube up this O-ring to slide in there. That'll make it a lot easier. And I'm also going to blow these holes out with air to see if we have to clean up those threads or not. I'll thread the correct bolts in and see. So 
See, these are the bolts out of the, the machine I robbed the starter out of. We'll see how they thread in there. Uh, not too good. It's looking like they strip the threads out of there. So I'm going to have to tap that out to a, probably a quarter inch bolt, I'm thinking. Standard will fit through there. And then, but I'm thinking we're going to have to take a bunch of stuff apart. I'll see if I have a tap short enough that fits in there. So I can't fit a, a tap down in there. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take the footwell out, the clutch cover off. Well, let's take the clutches off. We'll have to take the inner clutch cover off just to get in there to tap those holes. So that's why I was saying how important it is to use the correct bolts and not cross thread them in. Because that just made a ton more work compared to what it would have been. It would have been probably a 20 minute job or less to do this. So we'll get to doing that. I think I'm going to try just taking this loose so we can move it back far enough maybe to get the clutch cover out of there. There's a spacer under the, the back part of the wheel well there. That might give us enough room to get that out. I've done them before without taking it completely apart. So to take all the bolts out of the clutch cover. We got the clutch cover out of there. I'll we'll have to, I'll pull the secondary clutch first and then I'll pull that primary. Can't really see too well. There's a secondary clutch bolt back here, just a half inch bolt. I'll slip this belt off. I kind of just kind of just walked it walked it off of the edge of the clutch. It's a good time to inspect the belt whenever you're taking it off. The edges are what usually wear the worst or you get chunks that'll come out of it, but this one actually looks pretty good. It's a newer newer Daco or Gates belt. So I think that one's okay. Slide the, the secondary clutch off. Then we'll take the bolt out of the primary. That's just a 5 8 Make sure we get that spacer out of there. And we'll thread our puller in there. I do like to put grease on my puller. I just gob a little on the end there and then there is grease already on the threads from using it previously. The impact I'm using is not a super powerful impact, so you're not really gonna hurt anything with that puller, but if you're using a bigger one, you gotta be a little bit careful on how hard you're hitting that with the impact. Now we can get to that inner cover.
there's three three seven sixteenths bolts back by where the secondary clutch was and then there's three screws There's a, a metal ring here and just the rubber seal there. You want to make sure that's okay. Now we can get to what we were trying to get to. I'll spray a little bit of lube in each one. Now being these were a metric size, you can kind of get away with stepping up to the standard a lot of the time. So what I got here is a quarter by 20 thread. And it's aluminum so it threads fairly easily. Clean that off and run it through again. One of the biggest things when you're threading is just when you pull this out, just make sure you don't have a bunch of chips backed up in there because you go to put that back in, you can actually take out your new threads. And that's threading in pretty nice. So we got that one. Now I'll have to do this lower one. You want to make sure you start out straight too. You get crooked, it'll throw off the hole you're trying to do. This one feels like it might be wobbled out almost too big to do this. I'm hitting the end already. Blow that out. I got some threads in there, but it's not very good. This bolt seemed like it was almost loose on the bottom here, so I wonder if it was rubbing bad and ruining the threads. That top one we got good, but... Well, I think I got it good enough to try. Otherwise, their only option next is to is to step it up a size, but then I'll have to drill the hole out in the actual starter. Well, that just pushes in like that. Sometimes they can be kind of tough with the O-ring. I've actually had new starters where I've had to use the old O-ring because they actually come with too big of a O-ring on there. So I'm going to put a little... Loctite on the the bolts. Hopefully that'll help a little bit if our threads are a little bit weak. So it's looking like our bolts are just a little bit too long. I'll have to put a, another washer in there. Because the next size smaller is actually too short. So I added a washer to each of them. That top one looked like it tightened down. This one I'm going to be real careful with to not go too tight. You can kind of feel if they're pulling or not. 
That top one got good and tight though. But you can tell if you're pulling the threads out, you can usually feel it starting to almost get easier as you go. Pull our battery cable back down. I think that was back like this. We'll be able to try this without putting it all back together anyway. All right, we'll try firing it up. We'll watch that starter, make sure it doesn't move on us when we're hitting it. That seemed to work good. I'm thinking that was our issue. That whips it over pretty good. Before, if it would get caught on the compression stroke, you couldn't get it to go past. You had to keep bumping it until you got it to go past, and then sometimes it would start. And I noticed the starter was moving too. Even on the previous video, I didn't realize that when I had the camera down like this, this was moving as we were trying to start it, so. And it wasn't turning over fast enough was another problem making it hard starting. So we'll get this thrown back together and this one should be good to go. For the primary clutch you want to make sure you torque down. I've got a hook tool that hooks on the clutch here and this one is uh, 40 foot-pounds that we torque it to. This is the tool I was talking about. It's just a clutch holding tool. This kind of works on various models. You just got to make sure it doesn't get into a spot that's gonna actually cause any damage on the clutch because it is steel and that's aluminum. So if you pull too hard on it, that'll hurt the clutch. The secondary clutch is uh, 17 foot pounds. The shaft on the secondary clutch, it's a good idea to put a little anti-seize or something on there. that one can get rusted on you don't really want to do that on the primary that's that's a tapered fit so you want to keep that dry the secondary is a light enough torque it can just hold the clutch while I do it I'm just using a, it's just a Quinn cheaper digital torque wrench from Harbor Freight. Works good for a lot of this littler stuff. So to put the belt back on, you want the the letters usually facing so you can read them. Sometimes they have arrows on them for direction of travel, but. So this one, you put it on the primary and you can kind of put it around the secondary and keep pushing down here because it's going to want to walk up. I'm not sure why this one's being so stubborn. Usually they walk right on there. There we go. 
think our secondary might be a little sticky. Seemed like it rode okay though, so we'll see once we get it back together. It's not too bad to take that off to just do that secondary clutch, but you know, we'll get the cover back on and the wheel well back in and we'll be good to go. All right, we got it all put back together. I'm gonna wait till tomorrow to try firing it up when it's cold to make sure, because that's when it had the most problems was in the mornings when it had sat all night and it would have trouble starting again. So right now it pops off pretty easily. And the battery's not even fully charged, I don't think. So we'll throw the, throw the trickle charger on it overnight and see what it does in the morning. Well, it popped right off this morning. I just went out and took it for a short ride. I let it cool off again. We'll see. It pops right off now. That must have been our main issue. But that's going to do it for this one. If you like this sort of thing, like the videos and subscribe to the channel. And we'll catch you on the next one.